Hepatitis A virus is the most common cause of acute hepatitis in case of children, both in the United States and as well as in India. So Nelson also talks about it, OP Ghai and IAP textbook also talk about it that this is the most common cause of acute hepatitis in children. Let us now discuss individual viruses and first we will be talking about Hepatitis A virus. Hepatitis A virus is the most common cause of acute hepatitis in case of children, both in the United States and as well as in India. So Nelson also talks about it, OP Ghai and IAP textbook also talk about it that this is the most common cause of acute hepatitis in children. If you look at the, if you include adults also, you find that this is the most common viral hepatitis worldwide. What are the virus characteristics? It is a non-enveloped RNA virus which belongs to a separate genus called as hepatovirus genus. So a separate genus of this has been created called as hepatovirus genus which belongs to Picorna viride family. So it is a Picorna virus family member. It is a heat resistant virus, acid resistant virus, ether resistant virus. So specific neutralization strategies are needed. Usually it is seen that appropriate chlorination, autoclaving can kill this virus easily. Boiling of the water for one minute, for longer than one minute can also kill this virus easily. But if you just apply heat, the virus will be resistant to that. The spread is mostly by fecal oral route. It is the most important route. It is seen that in developing countries, it is the contaminated water, which is a more important source. Whereas in developed countries, it is the contaminated food which is a more common source. But the most common is for all practical purpose, it is fecal oral route. So obviously HIV infections will be common worldwide, especially in areas where there is overcrowding, poor hygiene and uh, poor you know disposal of sewage water, you will find hepatitis A virus infections to be more prevalent. Although textbooks say that perinatal transmission in a minority of cases has been reported, for all practical purpose, it is more theoretical than a practical thing. Incubation period ranges between 15 to 45 days. Nelson says that the mean incubation period is about 3 weeks. Patient is infectious even before the onset of symptoms. Why? Because virus is excreted into the tools. Normally, virus is ingested through a contaminated food or water. It reaches small intestine. From small intestine through portal vein, it reaches the liver. In liver, it produces its inflammation and characteristic features. After replicating in hepatic cells via bile, it reaches back into the gut and from there it is secreted into the stool. This entire process takes about 7 to 10 days to, to develop. But the incubation period is between 15 to 45 days. So we normally say that the patient is infectious even before the shedding of virus in the stool begins even before the first symptom has appeared. So fecal excretion according to Nelson, it starts late in the incubation period, reaches peak just before the onset of symptoms and resolves by two weeks after the onset of jaundice. And the duration of fecal viral excretion is prolonged in case of infants. So infants are more infectious if they get infection with hepatitis A virus. So MCQ point, what is the infectious period? Infectious period in hepatitis A virus is two weeks before to one week after the onset of jaundice. Please remember this. This is a MCQ point already asked in entrance exam. Then what are the clinical features? After the incubation period is over, uh, usually we say that it is an acute febrile illness. So there will be fever present in most of these patients. So it is an acute febrile illness in which there will be prodromal period where there is fever with or without chills. These patients will have anorexia, they will have vomiting, along with that they will develop clinical jaundice that is ictrus will appear. So this is the typical manifestation that usual duration of illness is about 7 to 14 days. After 7 to 14 days, there is a recovery. After 7 to 14 days of illness, there is a recovery happening in the patient spontaneously. It is seen that in young infants, the disease can be an ectric or can resemble a typical acute gastroenteritis. So these patients will have vomiting, fever and 
लूज वॉटर स्टूल्स सो इन्फेंट्स कैन हैव अ स्लाइटली डिफरेंट प्रेजेंटेशन फ्रॉम द यूजल केसेज ऑफ वॉट यू फाइंड इन एक्यूट हेपेटाइटिस ए वायरस इन्फेक्शन ऑब्वियसली वेन यू डू एग्जामिनेशन यू विल फाइंड दैट दीज पेशेंट्स आर हैविंग देर मे और मे नॉट बी प्लस माइनस लोकल लिम्फनोड इन्वॉल्वमेंट लोकल लिम्फोडिनोपैथी देर मे और मे नॉट बी हेपेटिक हेपेटोमेगली और स्प्लिनोमेगली and if they are present they both are usually mild in nature very rare patients can have some manifestations these rare manifestations are more common in adolescents and adults the rare manifestations that you need to at least remember from entrance point of view because they can ask you which of the following is seen or which of the following is not reported in hepatitis a virus so according to nelson you may find features like hypoplastic bone marrow Although progression to aplastic anemia is very very rare, but still hypoplastic uh, bone marrow, which is self-limited, can be seen in some adolescent patients, some adult patients. You th these patients can develop features of GI ulcers. Some of the patients can develop immune complexes. Although immune complex formation is more common in other viruses, but immune complexes can lead to the development of nephritis in them. it can lead to development of arthritis in them it can produce cryoglobulinemia and it can manifest in the form of leukocytoclastic vasculitis but please remember that all these manifestations are very very rare in children they are more common in adolescent adults and especially those people who are having a coexisting problem like some immunosuppression like post transplant recipients like long term corticosteroid use or uh, you know sometimes you can find them in patients who have coexisting liver disease other than hepatitis a virus infection so these are the overall clinical features for all practical purpose this or this is the presentation that you will find this one or this one now moving to the diagnosis this is a photograph which is on the side which is telling you about the antibodies and the features let's first have a look at the photograph this is telling you what happens to the alt levels so first of all alt levels will peak about 1 and 1/2 to 2 months of after the infection after the entry of virus happens and then it usually comes to the baseline hepatitis a viral stool excretion happens for about 2 to 2 to and 1/2 weeks after the onset you will find that jaundice and symptoms again they last for 7 to 14 days and uh, igm anti hiv appears first then after 6 months its titers tend to fall rapidly whereas igg anti hiv tends to last throughout the lifetime so what are the points that you need to know first of all what is the investigation of choice the investigation of choice is igm anti hiv antibody so igm anti hiv shows active infection or acute infection in the patient they can be checked by radio immuno assays so radio immuno assay can be done to detect igm anti hiv it appears with the onset of symptoms it is detectable up to 4 to 6 months past infection as well as vaccinated individuals will show the presence of igg anti hiv antibody so if there is a patient who is having suppose a report is given to you the question says 5 year old child is having igg anti hiv what is your diagnosis either it is a past infection or the patient has been vaccinated so you will look for the vaccination history in the patient then igg anti hiv it appears within 8 weeks of the onset so these values which are given they can be asked in exam and these values are taken from nelson i have not gone into overlapping values because all these incubation periods overlapping values if you take 10 different books 10 different variations you will find so i am sticking to nelson and harrison for the values so that these are the most authentic ones that we can use and it provides life long protection if igg antibody is there in the plasma liver function tests are supportive supportive means they support the diagnosis but they by themselves do not tell you that it is which type of hepatitis virus infection the lfts will show the presence of raised serum bilirubin there will be raised ast raised alt which will be mild to moderate there will be raised alkaline phosphatase but remember that alkaline phosphatase when in viral hepatitis 
it is usually less than three times the normal value. It is elevated, but only up to three times of the normal value, not more than that. And there can be sometimes raised gamma glutamyl transpeptidase and raised five nucleotidase. I'm writing just in small fonts on the side because this is something you already know. I'm just concept, you know, compiling everything together. One important point that blood PCR for HAV viral detection is now available, but it is used only for research purposes and in a set country like ours, in a resource limited setting for all practical purposes, it does not exist. But somebody theoretically says, kya blood PCR detection for virus is there? Yes, it is there only for research laboratories. So what are the complications in HIV that can be seen? So first of all, the complications are rare. They can be seen in the patient is old, immunocompromised or those with pre-existing liver disease. No chronicity is seen. This is your MCQ point. HIV never shows chronicity. So what are the complications? First complication is acute liver failure. It is overall very rare, 0.5%. But if you look at pediatric ALF cases, in the endemic areas, it will be found in up to 40% cases, right? So if you have less than 0.5% means, if you have 100 or 200 children, just one or two out of them, very few people are going to get this um, infection, this acute liver failure in hepatitis A virus infection. So they're not going to end up with uh, liver failure. But if you collect 100 patients of acute liver failure in children and you look at their etiologies in endemic areas, 40 out of 100, 4 out of 10 will be your hepatitis A virus patient. So it can happen and that is why you need to follow up these patients with uh, looking specially for, as I just told you, prothrombin time uh, for any complication to develop. Then you will have prolonged cholestatic syndrome. These Some of these children can have prolonged cholestasis which can show a waxing and waning nature. It can cause features like pruritus and fat malabsorption. It resolves without sequelae. Very rarely you may need to give antipruritic drugs like antihistamines and uh, supplementation with fat soluble vitamins may need to be given. But overall, uh, usually it is seen that even if this syndrome develops, about 6 to 8 months it tends to improve in most patients. Before we finish hepatitis A virus, let us talk about the treatment and prevention of hepatitis A virus infection. Now treatment in hepatitis A virus patients is supportive. If the patient is having any prolonged cholestasis, then obviously supportive therapy, symptomatic therapy can be given in these patients. However, for the presence of prevention, there are two aspects of prevention. First is ensuring hand hygiene, proper disposal of fecal material is a community-based thing that you can do. And second prevention is in the form of vaccines. There are two types of vaccines of hepatitis A virus which are available in India. We have the live attenuated vaccine and we have the killed vaccine or inactivated vaccine. Both forms are available. Both of them are very uh, good. The only difference between them is live attenuated vaccine is given as a single dose according to IAP schedule at 12 months of age. So single dose provides lifelong protection and uh, killed vaccine or inactivated vaccine, two doses need to be given six months apart. So first dose is usually given at about 12 months and second dose is given at 18 to 19 months. Both these doses which I have mentioned, both these regimes which I have mentioned are according to Indian Academy of Pediatrics 2021 guidelines, the latest guidelines. But HAV is not a part of national immunization schedule. It is not a part of national immunization schedule. Please remember this. Not yet. Uh, but what about contacts? Although in Western world, you have specific immunoglobulin available for close contacts, particularly who are immunosuppressed. But Nelson also agrees and in all for all practical purposes, vaccines are better for post-exposure prophylaxis as well. So if there is an unvaccinated person 
who has some risk factor and there is a contact with the patient with the person who is having this uh, hepatitis A virus infection, the child. So, you will go in for post exposure prophylaxis using vaccine itself. So, single dose of vaccine will be given and uh, if vaccine is given within 10 days of exposure in contacts who are unimmunized, it provides more than 90 percent protection from severe or symptomatic HIV infection. So, this is one point can be asked as MCQ point and overall prognosis in HIV is otherwise very good.